Hey guys, welcome to my show today. I have the guest Henry Vonny here. I'm、uh, gonna interview him about his、um, career change, quite a quite a exciting career change, and a very very rich career history as well. So let me start this. So Henry, of course, his highlight, I believe,、uh, is the recent bushfire assist in Victoria. He was actually the first、um, reservist there,、uh, and also this being a while、uh, ever since the re- reservists have done a great. Uh, operation and evacuating how many、um, uh, villages? Oh, we did one village, but I think、yeah. the total of people was more than three hundred. And then you organize around two hundred、uh, staff from the reserves. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a great operation. So,、um, so now of course Henry is a mortgage broker,、um, and before that、uh, he studied financial planning. The industry is gone,、uh, and uh, before that、uh, you were headhunter for a specific engineer group. And before that, you were almost a regional manager at Coles, and of course, we met in the、uh, Kapuka, sitting in the same room. Best soldiers, not the best. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about about us, you know,、uh, about you. Sorry,、uh, how how you have you of of course I knew that you have some other business experience and tutoring and all that. So 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 much change. Of course, you did very well in all the roles, and and why those change and why mortgage broker now? That's a Interesting question. I think one of the things that attracted me to a mortgage broking career was I really, at that time in my career, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. I was quite happy in what I was doing. I was paid quite well, but I was looking for something a bit more challenging. And you had previously mentioned about mortgage broking. I was studying financial planning, and at the time, post the Royal Commission, there was a lot of regulatory changes. Right, so、mm. studying the business models, I didn't just want to help. Rich people get richer. I wanted to work with the everyday families and help them get ahead, especially with、uh, like the background and my values. I wanted to help the average person get into home ownership and then go from not just their first property but to many. And mortgage broking was a great business model at the time, and it still is. So yeah, that's kind of how I look、um, mortgage broking. For the other career change, I think similar things. I went into that industry having a specific goal I wanted to achieve. I achieved it. And then found myself in a place where I wanted more, and then that industry probably wouldn't give it the growth that I wanted. So I decided to make those changes. Yep. So there's quite a few reasons there, and、uh, indeed, you know, the very very super rich guy they don't actually need mortgage. Perhaps、uh, they need other investment stuff and lifestyle. And、uh, you actually take a big pay cut,、yeah. um, you know, to become a mortgage broker、uh, associate first, and then you take another. You gave up the pay, you know. You become self-employed earlier than you planned it.、Um, so, what gave you that confidence、uh, in in this decision making? You know, just go solo,、uh, stop become an independent、uh, license holder, and then、um, the pipeline is going to be very long、uh, for mortgage broker. For those who don't know, because you follow up with a customer for three months, they got a pre-approval for you from the bank. That's another month, and then they spend another two months in the market, look for the property, and then they sign a three-month settlement. And then you get paid a second month or third month from the bank later on. That's almost a year to see your first customers pay. So what gave you that、uh, confidence to make that decision? I wouldn't say it was confidence necessarily. It was definitely a big adjustment from going from PAYG to self-employment. I think the first time I realized I was able to make these changes was that, you know, in university, strangely enough, I did one subject in management, and he talked about this idea of having golden handcuffs, having High PAYG income, but being stuck with a growing lifestyle and creeping expenses. I think it's quite common in Australia and even overseas in America. I actually didn't change my personal spending much during my increasing、uh, personal income, so that gave me the freedom to take those options.、Um, it was the biggest change going from having a stable PAYG income, whether it be high or low, to that long pipeline as a mortgage broker. But because I'd seen the industry and accepted that I wanted that challenge, and I knew I could close clients, and I could knew that I was doing them a service and putting them in the right direction, I knew I'd get business. So that gave me that confidence. Yep. So it's it's more the the courage you have as well. Of course, Henry got a little bit of saving to survive for for twelve to twenty four months that he calculated when he's doing his business plan. So、uh, you keep mentioning about you looking for challenge in the career, not just about the pay. Of course, the pay will come,、uh, the income will come, the wealth will come. 
So what's the specific challenge uh, you are looking for or what's the specific challenge you're enjoying or where you're seeing yourself, um, gonna, uh, you know, where's your, your achievement as a broker in five, 10 years time? Yeah, I think you mentioned I've had a lot of different careers previously. And I think if someone was to ask me, hey, Henry, what is the key uh, commonality between all these careers? It's actually helping people and learning. So mortgage broking, you get to help lots of families, whether in good positions or tough positions, that's really rewarding. And then challenging myself is the education. The industry is constantly evolving. There's different products coming online. There's different branches of broking, which I didn't realize you can get into. And it turns out commercial and business uh, broking is what I really enjoy because of my business operations backgrounds. So yeah, I think that's um, what I'm chasing most of the time. One of the challenges I'm really enjoying right now is learning more about commercial lending, different structures, how people have done deals in the past but can't do the same deals today because of regular changes or you know, bank policy changes. But there's always new ways to present a deal to the lender or for the conversation with the client to go, hey, I know you want to achieve this outcome, but it might take a few months or a few weeks just to do a bit of preparation. So when we present it to the bank, they also understand what you're trying to achieve. So um, Henry, you got a great network. I think that's uh, I see that as a, one of your strengths. Uh, before you joined the industry, you have done a lot in the past, and also during your course time, you actually been mentoring a lot of young uh, manager. You've been helping a lot of people out, uh, also in the uh, army reserve. You know, getting them to promote, uh, training their skill up, and also you know as a headhunter in the previous engineer uh, specialist uh, HR company, you help them to find a better job. So it's like, you know, they own you something, you know, I would say. Uh, so back to the common question I ask every broker is that how you get your first batch of the customer? Yeah. So uh, I just transitioned out of recruitment. And when you're a recruiter, you do a lot of network, a lot of cold calls, a lot of working leads and getting top. And the great thing about being a recruiter is that the, pro the service that you're selling is actually in benefit of the client. You're helping them get their pay rise, get their next step in their career. And I see mortgage broking is very similar. Getting that person to their first home, helping them manage their mortgage, reduce their debt, getting them ahead into their first invest or second investment property. So that's really kind of easy for me to sell that service. But those clients I was constantly in contact with because um, I guess what's been nice is that I've been able to mentor a few people in the past and we've, we've kept in contact over the years, regardless of the careers I'm in or that they've transitioned to themselves. So uh, I mentioned, hey, look, I've started a new career in mortgage broking. We previously talked about property or, hey, if you, are you considering or if you know anyone who'd like to help, I just asked the question. And yeah, I had a few engineers who referred me actually either their own deal or actually some of family members or friends who were looking at the time because the product I had, I knew was the best or I knew I could help them go forward to where they need to be. Yep. And uh, Henry also... Uh, show a great interest in property, um, property developments, commercial deal. Um, and do you have like a long-term goal to build up your own property portfolio, step into property development, JV with some of your clients that you helped in the past? Yeah, we already have these conversations starting today, which is very exciting for myself. I think for my property journey, what I'd like to achieve first is actually retire my wife. I'd like to replace her income, give her the freedom. I'm a bit of a workaholic, so... I like to do what I do today. I probably will continue to it even if I were to officially retire. But yeah, I think giving her the freedom would be a great achievement as a first step. And um, do you see yourself, because um, actually Henry uh, already start managing a small team. Uh, do you see yourself that in the future, a lot of broker, you know, when they become mature in the industry, they either choose to um, hire many uh, their own associate seeing as many clients as possible, or uh, they also hire a lot of sabi, coach, uh, and a mentor as many brokers as possible. So in early, very early stage now, you already start mentoring people. You have your own admin team as well. So where do you see yourself for these two directions or maybe a bit hybrid? I think it'd be a bit of a hybrid. Uh, I really enjoy coaching people. I really enjoy seeing them succeed. It's, for me, it's a great bit of personal satisfaction but also really enjoy working with my customers. Um, not just, you know, one deal and it's transactional. I actually like to see them grow. It's been very exciting for me to see someone, you know, graduate. And this is a stereotype journey, right? Like someone graduates, they get their first decent job, they build up some savings, they move out and go, oh, you know, 
maybe I could actually afford a home. Let's try this to have that conversation and get their first home. There's a couple of you know pay rises in between. Some PE recruiter kind of helps that conversation. And then they're considering investment property. So you can see your clients grow and proceed and achieve the goals as well. I think that really makes me happy. So I think it'd be a bit of a hybrid for, for a while. Yep. And um, you also, you know, as a very active reservist, uh, how do you see uh, this self-employed career fit into that? Um, your other side of the career, of course, you're being promoted as a captain and uh, still achieve, um, you know, trying to pursue a higher perhaps. How do you see yourself balancing these two? I think the great thing about being self-employed that you have control of your, your own time. Uh, part-time service is um, a service, so there is a significant commitment involved. But the great thing about being self-employed, you're not worried that you're leaving work for other people. You can set up the systems yourself. You're in direct control of your own time and you can really set your own lifestyle up in the way you want to do the things that you want, which I really enjoy about being self-employed. I can tell that, you know, you probably, once you start earning a bit more uh, and more and more in mortgage broking, you're probably losing money by providing that service. But great, you know, thank you very much for providing the service to the country. So one last question is, if you can give one piece of advice for those who consider to be a broker, uh, what would that be? There's one bit of advice that I would give to people considering being a broker. I would say, reach out to anyone you know who's a broker, have that first conversation, ask them what the hard parts of the industry are, not just the good parts. Sit down, reflect and make a plan that, hey, if this is a step I'd like to take forward, I've got some actionable steps I can proceed with today and not just wait. Until you start doing, you won't know all the ins and outs, but you have to start doing things to find out. I think that's the best thing you do. Reach out to a broker, have that discussion and create an action plan if you want to move forward. And if it's not for you, that's fine. There's always something else. It's a very common com uh, conversation I had with, as a recruiter. There's a many careers you can have. You don't just have to have one. As long as it aligns to your goals and the outcomes you wish to achieve, then you know it's right for you. Indeed, because uh, mortgage broking as self-employed actually has a great failure rate, I would say. 80% of the mortgage broker probably will give up in the first couple of years. So find out the reality, you know, not just the good side, but the, the, the bad side, the, the risk, the challenge. And everyone's position is slightly unique uh, to the rest. So you, you guys, if you want to consider changing career, welcome to subscribe our channel. Uh, we're going to share a lot about mortgage broking career, property investment tips, and also you can reach out to us via email. Uh, we're based in Melbourne, but we have office around Australia and we'd love to reach out to you and then find out your talent and then design a career and a business that is suitable for your lifestyle. Ciao. That's it.